Hey, have you ever wondered if it is possible to play EU4 while being constantly at war? Well, in this video I'm going to try that. So let me explain the rules real quick. I'm going to start a war as soon as the game allows it, which is December 11 for 1444, and then there won't be a single day of peace ever. However, since you can't enter alliances, annex subjects, lower autonomy and do other useful things while being at war, we're going to have small gaps of peace within a single day. Well, enough talking already, you'll see everything in the video, so let's start playing. Yeah, and hopefully I don't need to tell you why did I pick Miwa for this challenge. Alright, so let's start by dealing with our estates. So I picked all mana privileges, Brahmin leadership for the admin advisor discount, religious diplomats because we definitely need some strong allies, nobility integration policy because I'm going to rely on my vassals a lot, this one for military advisor discount, this one for dev cost and state maintenance discount, estate loans, and last but not least patronage of the arts. Now let's pick Shiva as our deity because we are going to expand a lot. Now we need to pick rivals and this is really important because we might end up fighting one of them in our first war in December. Oh look at that, we've got a very good estate agenda and now our first war is going to be pretty chill. Alright, now I'm finally going to hire two mercenary companies and now it's time to unpause, deal with these rebels and wait for a month to pass by. Alright, it's already December 11th, which means that from now on there won't be a single day of peace ever. By the way, if you are enjoying this video and want to see more stuff like that, please leave a like and subscribe, that helps a lot. This war is going just fine, however, I should be more careful since I already lost 2k manpower in just a matter of months. By the way, during this war I need to get as much CBs as possible, so I'm spying on all the nations around me. Good, we have won the siege, so this war is almost over. Only the last battle remains. And here we go, now it's pretty much over. Ok, now I should choose my next target and I'm thinking about these guys. So let's start the second war. By the way guys, does anybody want to count how many wars are in this video? No, I'm, I'm just asking. And let's Phalanx Kutch. By the way, my manpower pool is almost the same as it was before the war and hopefully it stays this way. I might be crazy, but did I get richer during these wars? What the hell? Maybe this is how you're supposed to play me war. Ooh, this is going to help, definitely, thank you. Damn, this guy was pretty annoying. I hate it when these little guys have a level 3 fort. Alright, we stuck wiped them, so it's time to make peace. And now we are going to have our first gap of peace, which is not really a gap, because I literally paused the flow of time. Ok, I want to release Jangladesh as my vassal. Somehow they are a bit disloyal, but ok. Anyways, I also want to ally Janpur. And now let's think who are we gonna fight. You know, I think I'm gonna take it easy, let's just annex this one province minor. And here we go, we haven't had a single day of peace. The concept of pausing time in EU4 is pretty confusing, if I'm being honest. I think my next war is gonna be against this guy, since it's the easiest way to fight Sync. By the way, we are doing very good in terms of military point, and that's definitely going to help. And now I just have to wait till the siege is over. Alright, it's finally over, took a good deal of time, but we are ready to peace out. Now let's score this province, and let's immediately start the war against these guys. Alright, here's their army and it wasn't a problem at all, okay. Well, I expected this war to be hard, but I'm glad it's not and my manpower is still okay. Alright, I've just fully occupied Sindh, so we are going to take one province from them, break the alliance with Gujarat and humiliate them. Somehow all of the Timurids vassals are loyal and I think AI Timurids are doing much better in E4 domination. Oh, look at that! Nagaur has declared a war on Dandar, so I'm definitely going to vassalize them. Ok, the siege is over, so let's make Dandar our vassal, and now we have two more simple wars going on. By the way, we also can phalanx this little fella. Alright, now it's time to deal with these two. I have just eclipsed Sint, and overall our mana generation is very impressive. We are able to end both of our wars, so let's phalanx Nagaur. And here goes Miwat. During this gap of peace let's make this territory a state. And let's also ally Vijayanagar. And now I'm going to attack this little guy right here. I also think that I'm going to need help in my wars very soon, so let's carry some favors. By the way, I forgot to mention that I royal married Vijay during my previous wars before aligning them. 
That's a pretty good option to secure a Diplo slot. Okay, I need a general. Oh, what? Whoa, six shock? God damn. Wow, this run is officially blessed. I have carried enough favors with Jaunpur, so this is probably what we are going to do next. Okay, I guess this is the best province to develop Renaissance, so let's spend some Diplo points and mill points doing that. Okay, not gonna lie, I'm thoroughly surprised that this is our first Rebels, excluding the guys from the beginning. My present war is over, so it's time to attack Baluchistan. Jaunpur is willing to help as well, so hopefully I won't lose too much manpower. Okay, let's also piss out these guys. I won't annex them though, cause I'm running out of weak enemies. My plan for this war is to piss out Gujarat to weaken their alliances and then focus on Baluchistan. Luckily Jaunpur is helping me, so everything should be alright, at least for this war. Meanwhile we have made some progress in the development of Renaissance. I don't know where are these guys going, but hopefully they do this with aim to help me. We are making some decent progress on Gujarat's capital and also these rebel uprisings are pretty helpful. In general we are doing pretty good so far. I should be careful though, cause my manpower is a big problem. We have managed to siege down the capital of Gujarat and I didn't actually lose as much manpower as I expected, which is very good. Ok, there's some of them that adds flavor. Um, what are the odds here? Um, okay, good luck, buddy. It seems like Gujarat is done. They still have some army around there, but we have occupied all of their provinces, so I believe it's pretty much over. By the way, this little strange war is over. You know, maybe this run isn't blessed after all. This guy sucks. Hey, bro, stay there, please. You hear me? Stay there, please, man. It's your objective. Oh. Unfortunately, Multan has occupied all of Balochistani forts, so we are capit sieging the rest of the provinces. Okay, right here we definitely need to pick strength and noble privileges. Manpower is crucial for us. We finally can piss out Gujarat, so let's humiliate them, take free provinces and a little bit of money. How the hell this guy is allied to the Timurids? This challenge continuously gets harder and harder. Baluchistan is one of the few nations we can beat pretty easily, so I'll just take these three provinces from them and that's it. Our next war is going to be against Malwa and it will be the hardest one so far, but I'm pretty sure we'll definitely win. This way we are also fighting Sindh and I'm not gonna lie, this is pretty convenient. By the way, look at our name placement, what is that? Damn. Alright, let's help our allies right there. That was pretty good. Nice, we won another small battle, so I guess we can siege a little bit. Okay, we have kinda smashed them, they have some terrible casualties and from now on I think it shouldn't be a problem to win this war. By the way, a huge advantage of this challenge is that I don't really care about coalitions, cause I'm going to fight all of these nations anyway. I only care about Timurids for now. And now let's piss out Sindh. I'm going to break their alliances, take their money and take two provinces from them. A pretty good peace deal. In fact, this war is going surprisingly good and I have occupied most of Malwa. That's pretty cool. AI VJ helps me a lot, so let's help them deal with my rebels. Oh man. Well, this is pretty unfortunate. I wasn't paying attention. I should be more careful from now on. Okay, I'm going to piss out Malwa in a matter of months, so let's attack Delhi and call Janpur. Ooh, these mercs are getting stuck wiped, so let's hire another army. By the way, we also can renew our estate loans. And now we can embrace renaissance, that's neat. Now let's piss out Malwa for some money, and I'm also forcing them to break the alliance with Bengal. Bro, even Chakatai came here to help them. Wow, outstanding. By the way, their army is bigger than ours, but we should be able to win still. I'm slowly getting insane though. I'm ready to piss out Sindh and I'm going to break the alliance with Delhi, even though I feel like I've done it once already. Here we go. You know, at first I was hesitating about fighting these guys, but I guess my 6 shock general does his job pretty well. My allies are really helping a lot this campaign. I'm actually surprised. Ok, I finally can white piece Bengal and let's go for it, cause I really want it. Ok, here's another event and I'm losing stuff, but at least now my air is decent. Unfortunately I'm fighting rebels with no manpower which is pretty unpleasant. 
but this one is definitely far from being over. Okay, now it's time to pass out daily for the war operations and just one province, because I want this truce to be pretty short. And now we immediately need to attack Bahmanis. This is basically the easiest target we have. Um, I don't know what will I do without any manpower, but I have some money for hiring mercs, so we should be fine. Ooh, that kinda looks like PJ is in a little bit of a trouble. Okay guys, so it's been 20 years and we haven't had a single day of peace. I don't know how many wars we've had, but definitely a lot. And this was actually easier than I expected. But right now, not gonna lie, our nation is in a pretty bad state. So if you want this challenge to continue, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.